don't have a hack squat, let me show you how we can fix that. All right, guys, I hear your problems. You either don't have a hack squat because you're a gym owner and the people who pick your equipment out suck, or the hack squat you have destroys your knees because it's terribly set up, it's terribly built, because it's a poor model. So, thought today in this video, what we would do is show you exactly what I want to do, or if I'm at a gym and can't use a hack squat, but I still want to simulate that motion, what we do, and all we need is two red bands from Elite FTS and ideally a ramp. But if we don't have a ramp, I'm gonna show you what to do. You're gonna need two carabiners, and I'm gonna show you why, because first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slip knot both these red bands around the top, and then we'll hook them with the carabiner. So, carabiners in my pocket. If you don't know how to slip knot, you should have done the Boy Scouts. Let me show you that again. Here, the hole, and you just make it tight. So you see the knowing on the bar? I want that to line up perfectly with that band. So that's how we know how to connect it. So from there, all we do, carabiner out of my pocket, we're gonna hook it just like that, take it around, and then all we're gonna do, latch it, through the hole, just like that. Now, simply repeat the process on the other side. If we were chest pressing, for example, like I used to do a lot of reverse band chest pressing on the Smith, because it felt good, and John used to have, have me do it, I would just put a singular orange band dead center, but with this, our back's gonna be in the middle, so we want the carabiners outside of my shoulders. So again, look where that's lined up. I'm gonna slide that over just a bit. Carabiner. One side of the band, hook it around. And then all we're gonna do, slide the band in, and now we're good to go. Next. Ramp. Right in the middle. And the reason we do that is so we can sink these low and get a lot of knee over toe action to simulate the hat squat. So what you have to do is kind of play around with how it is. I know where to set this up here, so if you see, look, that's perfect for me in this squat rack. So, let me show you a few reps. I'll get him to spin around so you can see it from all angles. Step one, I'll show you how I like to do it. Index finger, where the stripe of the gnarling is. We're gonna step in under the bar, unrack, just like that. So at the top, you can see, I am fully deloaded. Squat down, squat down, here, and up, one, two. One, two. Good and low. Sing them deep. This is where it works. This is where the magic is. All right, let's say you don't have the ramp. It's fine. Two 10 pound plates right in the floor. Our heels will go directly on those plates and then it's giving us the same action order to sink low, get zero or minimal pelvic tilt, either front or back but I'm gonna get these low and drill my quads really effectively. So let me show you a couple of those reps. All right, there you have it. If you don't have a hack squat, that's exactly how I would set it up in a Smith machine because even if you go to like, say Planet Fitness, they're gonna have a Smith machine. All you need to do is take your own bands, take two carabiners and you're golden. And then you stand on 10 pound plates if you don't have a wedge. It's not a big deal, guys. This is still gonna simulate what we do in a hack squat. The only difference is I would make sure I definitely strap a belt on tight. And that way, you know, just have some good lower back support. So I do, I wanna sink these things low, set my hamstrings on my calves, and then stand up to right at three-fourths lockout. If you notice at the top of that rep, I wasn't fully locking out or even hyperextending my knees. I wouldn't shit, I wouldn't even get into neutral. I was keeping all the tension on my quads because at the end of the day, that is our goal with this exercise. So let's talk about sets, reps, and where I like to place it. To me, if I'm doing a leg day and I'm gonna do this exercise, I'm gonna program it towards the very end. So leg curls, adductor. I would do some leg extensions to warm up. Leg press is my main money maker. Some leg extensions, and then I would come do this reverse band hack. Or you could flip that. You could go right off the leg press into the reverse band Smith machine squat, and then finish up with leg extensions. So both ways in terms of exercise selection and placement, I would put it either after leg press or after leg extensions at the very end, before I get into my RDL or stretching motion for my hamstrings. And as far as sets and reps, I do a top set and a back off. So top set, I'm looking at anywhere between eight and 15 reps. And then for my back off, I'd rest two or three minutes till my breathing is fully back to normal. I'd strip a plate or two, and then I'd just do what I call a Widowmaker, which is made famous by Dante Trudell, where you just get 20 plus, and it's just, you just gut them out. It's just one after the other, after the other, after the other, and just see how many you can get. 
it is extremely excruciating, but if you want your quads to be grow thick, big, and nasty, and get that really deep, cut in definition detail and vascularity, to me, this is where you earn it. And it's on squatting patterns and variations where you push them past where your brain thinks it can take it. So do that too. Two sets is all you're gonna need. If it was only like, say, let's say you're gonna do a pump day for your quads, you could do three sets of 12 to 15 and just pump them, almost like piston style. So on a pump day, that's how I do it. As opposed to a heavy day, I just do two, a top end and a back off. So if you like this video, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Post your questions below if you have any. And if not, until next time, Christmas TV.